Hello, I'm Annie Walther. I'm Professor of Computational Communication Science in the Department of Communication here at the University of Vienna. And I am Nicola Righetti, and I am a researcher in Computational Communication Science at the University of Vienna. And in this video, we'll give you a very short introduction into the world of network analysis. I will start by introducing some basic terms and concepts. And I will then show you an empirical example. What is network analysis? In the social sciences, we study usually individual or collective actors using observations, surveys or experiments. We usually treat those actors as independent from each other. But if we take a closer look, we realize that there are plenty of relationships between people. Friendship, kinship, there are flows of support, of resources and information between people. And in the digital world, we are able to trace network relations with digital data, for example, from social media, who follows or likes or mentions or comments whom. And with techniques of network analysis, we can study such relationships between actors, even in very large networks. What is a network? A network consists of two major elements. The nodes, these are the points, also called vertices, and the relationships between the nodes. They are called edges, ties or links. And networks are often represented as graphs. For example, here in this figure, you see an example graph showing nine nodes, which are labeled with letters A through I. And we see the edges between them. This small graph might, for example, represent a quite small class of students and the relationships between them might represent who parties with whom together. So it's a measure maybe of contact outside of the classroom or um, of information flow between the students. In social network analysis, we often ask for key positions in the network. So which node in this network is the most central or influential? You may take a short while to think about this. Which node in this network do you think is the most central? You may have thought that node G is the most influential in this network. Obviously, it's the node with the highest number of links. And this kind of centrality we call degree centrality. We count the number of edges of every link. And G has a degree of four because it has four links to other nodes. Degree centrality is a measure of communication activity or authority or prestige. If you look at the graph in another way, you may have come to the conclusion that node E in the middle is the most influential node. After all, it's the node which can reach all other nodes in a network with the lowest numbers of steps. So it's the node that is closest to all the other nodes in the network. And uh, this is another measure of centrality we call closeness. Actually, we calculate the inverse of the sum of the shortest path distances from a given node to all other nodes in the network. And this kind of centrality is a measure of independence from information flow of others. Actually, there's even another measure of centrality, which we call betweenness. And this is the node C. Node C shows the highest betweenness centrality. Why is that? Betweenness considers the number of shortest paths running between pairs of nodes through a given node. So it's a measure for how much control a given node has on the overall information flow in a network. And in other words, we measure the probability that communication between pairs of actors will run via a given actor. Social network analysis can be a valuable tool for understanding the contemporary digital communication ecosystem. For example, it makes it possible to identify the connection which allow the transmission of information and to detect online communities where this information flourishes. 
Let's have a look at a real-world example of a network analysis approach applied to the social media information ecosystem. This picture displays networks of social media accounts detected through an extensive analysis of several thousand political messages published on Facebook and Instagram in the lead-up to the 2021 German federal elections. Nodes of the network are represented by circles. They are Instagram accounts and Facebook pages and groups that shared political information in the six weeks prior to the election day. A link between nodes is to represent that connected accounts share the same content within circles of each other, which can be considered as a signal of coordination. Coordinated networks are used to broadcast certain kinds of content on social media platforms. They can be employed by legitimate actors like publishers to share content published in their magazines and newspapers. They might be used by partisan communities to strategically support certain political points of view. They can even be used for disseminating disinformation. Overall, the networks depicted on the photo were able to deliver content to a potential audience of hundreds of thousands of social media users. Some of these networks have been used by popular German publishers to broadly share news articles published on their journals. Other networks consist of official pages of political parties and have been used to reach out to the public with partisan political communication. Other networks include Facebook fan groups that have supported specific political parties during the election campaign. Small networks, made up of only a few accounts, are made up of Instagram and Facebook accounts linked together to republish the same content. Appropriate visualization of social networks is fundamental to identify and explore important aspects of a network. In this case, for example, the difference in node size represents accounts with varying degrees of activity. The larger the node, the higher the amount of content that the account is shared. Different colors make it possible to distinguish communities, which are groups of nodes more closely linked to each other within a larger network. The location of nodes depends on the characteristics of the network and the algorithm used to visualize the network and transmit important information. In this case, for instance, the nodes between the two communities represent the social media accounts that connect the two communities in the broader network. Instead, the small nodes isolated outside the main cluster are the ones that share only a few connections with the network. By elucidating the structure of networks, social network analysis allows to a better understanding of a variety of phenomena. The possible applications are countless, including the analysis of sociological and communication phenomena. Some of them are especially important today, such as the analysis of the dissemination of information and misinformation on social media. To learn more about social network analysis, check out the suggested links and the resources. We hope that this video gave you a good first impression of the potentials of social network analysis in the digital world. Thank you for your attention.